road she traveled. And our women who made a difference. A cool kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview with Judge Ramona Gonzalez, conducted on Thursday, April 27th by Shane. Part 1. Okay, well, um, the first question I have is, what inspired you to become a judge? Well, Shane, that's a very interesting question. Probably what inspired me to become a judge was Judge Peter Pappas. He was the judge um, who was ready to retire mm -hmm. when I decided to run. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, heard about, I read about him in some articles. And when, I, when he was getting ready to retire, uh, I wasn't even thinking about running for judge. But um, there was a lot of conversation along the, around the community about who was going to be the next judge. And I didn't like some of the conversation that was going on. So um, I was complaining about this and that, and my husband finally said, you know, stop complaining. If you aren't going to run, then I don't want to hear it. So I said, you're right. If you're going to complain, you should do something about it. So I'm going to run. So you, so because he was retiring, you wanted to run? Because he was retiring, and um, judge seats don't open very often. And I felt that I could give a lot to in service to the community by taking that, that judge. Mm -hmm. um, well, another question is, who did you run against to become judge for him, and uh, did you know him or her before that? Mm -hmm. This is probably, um, you know, I ran in 1995. How old were you back then? Two. <laughs> so you were two years old, and um, the way judicial races run, they're done in the spring because they are called nonpartisan races, which means there's no party politics. No Republicans or Democrats. Mm -hmm. So you run, and if there's more than two people, they run a primary, and the primary is in February. Mm -hmm. And then the two highest vote getters in the primary go in the general election in April. Mm -hmm. And the, when I ran, there were three of us in the primary. Um, Mel Hoffman, who was an attorney in town, Scott Horn, who is the sitting, was the sitting district attorney, and myself. And I knew both of them. And in these kind of races, you kind of know the other party because you have to be a lawyer in order to run. And I knew all the lawyers in town. So um, the three of us ran in the primary. I won the primary. Scott Horn came in second. And then in the general election in April, I won and Scott came in second. So. So did he end up just going back to? Uh, he yes he would see he was running um, in April and his district attorney seat runs in November, mm -hmm. so he could run for judge and not have to resign as the district attorney. Cool. So he just stayed the district attorney. Um. So when I was reading there, this um, is kind of a weird question, but it said that you had you uh, been watching the. Uh, John Burnett, John, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Bernadette show or something? Oh, the... <laughs> so what is that? I've never ah, heard of well, l let me show you, okay, what that is. Um, John Bernadette was an entertainer here in La Crosse, and he and his wife used to play at um, various places, and I had them play at my party the night of the election. Mm -hmm. You probably have this. This is a, um, do you have that one? I think I do. It is a lacrosse journal front page from the night I won the election, April 5, 1995. And this gentleman in the picture with me is John Bernadette. He is a singer performer in town, and um, he was performing at my party, mm -hmm. and so that's why his name appears in my stuff. Oh, so he, so does he have like a show on TV or something? No, no, no. He was just a local talent. Oh, just a local guy. So, and um, next question: What it, what are some of your fondest memories of being a judge? Well, you know, I've been a judge now for well since '95. So, how old are you? I was two and I'm 13 now. Okay, so, so for 11 years. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint just a couple of things mm -hmm. in those 11 years. But probably the most um, 
the, the things that stick out in my mind most are the times that I've had the opportunity to go into schools and visit with, with uh, students, mm -hmm. and um, also the times I've had young people in my courtroom who are now adults mm -hmm. who come back and say, I didn't really like what you did back then, Judge, but I understand now why you did what you did then, and thank you because I could have gone in a different direction mm -hmm. and I didn't. So those are probably the most um, gratifying mm -hmm. or things that I enjoyed the best. We moved into a new courthouse. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so a quick question. Are you still a judge now? Like, yes. Like a main judge? Yes. I'm what's called a circuit court judge, which in La Crosse, in the state of Wisconsin, there are state judges. The state judges serve at the county level, and they're called circuit court judges, and that's what I am. There's five of us now. There used to be three, then four, and now five. Um, but we are all the same level judge. We all have the same powers, but we have our own cases that we deal with. Well, um, earlier you said um, how like you didn't want to be ju a judge until um, he was retired. Or, um, well, yeah, I st I started my career in lacrosse uh, clerking for the judges. That means I was a lawyer and I helped the judges with research. And I did that for the first year that I was in town. And then I went into private practice with my husband, and I had children. And um, it was, that was from 81 to 95, or 94. And then in 94 is when I, 93, 94 is when I started to think about running. Um, I was never one of those people that always wanted to be a judge, because I had seen how hard the job of judging is from the inside, from when I worked for the judges. But it is a very responsible job, and you have the opportunity to help so many people that I could not turn my back from that when the opportunity came. Not to mention the fact that a lot of people were saying at the time that lacrosse was not ready for a woman judge, and because there hadn't been a woman elected to the bench in lacrosse county ever. So you were the first. I was the first. Well. So there was a lot of people that said, oh, that's never going to happen. And that's only, that was only 10 years ago, you know, people mm -hmm. were saying that. Um, but I had known a lot of people in the, in the community, and I felt very comfortable that people would vote for me. And so I decided to run. Well, um, before that, did you ever want to be something else other than a lawyer or a judge? No, I've, I've wanted to be a lawyer since I was before your age. That's, yeah. that's kind of a hard decision to make, so well, how did you, you... You have to remember that. I wasn't born in the United States. I was born in the Dominican right. Republic. So I, I come to the United States and um, I have a different appreciation for what it is to have freedom mm -hmm. and what it is to be able to vote and what it is that we enjoy and a lot of us take for granted. Um, and. So I wanted to make things better because this is my adopted country mm -hmm. and one always wants to do better things mm -hmm. when you choose something, which is what I've done. Yeah, um, in one of your articles I read that uh, you said, you said um, I want to fix things, which a judge doesn't usually do. Yeah, when you're a lawyer, you listen to what your client has to say and then you help your client to get what your client would like to get within the confines of the law. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're all, you know, whether you agree with what your client wants or not, mm -hmm. that's your job. Uh, when you're the judge, you get to look and listen to both sides, and then you get to decide what's right, mm -hmm. and then you get to do it. Which means that sometimes, most of the times, you, you try and fix things so that everybody has their rights protected. And I was a lot more comfortable doing that than I was representing one side. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, let's see. I can't remember any of the articles. I'm going back to um, when you're the first judge. Is it like, what kind of feelings does it make you get when people say there shouldn't be a woman judge or you couldn't be one? Well, you know, people have the right to their own opinions. And I never got angry about that. I just un became more committed to winning because I, I believed that it was time for um, 
Lacrosse County to be able to have uh, a judge, not because they look a certain way, but because they can represent the interest of the community well, which is what I wanted to do. And I don't believe that, <clears throat> I didn't believe at the time, and I don't believe now, that you have to be one, either male or female, to do that. I have a question. Um, what is the hardest part of being a judge, and in particular a woman judge? The hardest part about being a judge is making the decisions and then letting them go. Have you ever made a decision and then second-guessed yourself into a headache? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I make decisions every day, many times a day, and I have to make a decision and then I have to let it go. Because if I don't, then I become, um, it becomes difficult to make the next decision. And what's the worst thing that can happen to a judge? You guys got an idea? Mm -hmm. If your job is to make decisions, what's the worst thing that can happen to make a bad decision? No, because you're going to make good decisions and bad decisions. That's just the way the world goes. But if your job is to make decisions, and you wake up one morning, and you're so afraid of making the wrong decision that you don't make any decisions at all, then are you doing your job? Mm -hmm. No. So what happens in those kinds of cases is the judge, if the judge can't make a decision, then the judge isn't doing their job. So you have to let it go, because otherwise you beat up on yourself and you can't do a good job. So what are some of the things that you brought with you? Some of the things I bought with, brought with me was the, with some of the stuff you may have. This is a the newspaper clipping of the night, the day I won the election. Mm -hmm which you've already read. Yep. Um, this, um, I brought my nameplate from my bench. This, um, my staff gave this to me. I brought you, this is a picture of the La Crosse County Bar Association in 1996. This is the year after I, I've been sitting on the bench for a year. And, and this is me in the front here. And this is Judge Pappas. This is Judge Mulroy. Um, Judge Monaban, Judge Perlich, and you probably don't even remember him, but that's Judge Topol. He used to be a judge in La Crosse, too. And then these are all the other lawyers that practiced at that time. And the, the Bar Association used to take these pictures annually or every other year, but um, I, I thought you might want to see what everybody looked like way back then when you yeah. guys were only two. <laughs> so I brought you that. And then I also brought you, um, when a judge retires in La Crosse County, it has been a tradition that the, judge, um, the judge's picture is hung in the courtroom in which they were serving. And this is the picture that hangs in my courtroom, Branch 1. And does anybody know who this is? Yeah, this is Peter G. Pappas. This is Judge Pappas, and he was the judge for a very, very long time. Can you read how long that was? 1978 to 1995. Okay, that's when he was Branch 1 Circuit Judge, but you know what? He was a judge before that. Can you read that? 1969 to 1978. So he was judge from 1969 to 1995. Correct. 26 years. Is that amazing? Yeah, and that's him. So I brought you that. I kind of took it down off the wall. It hasn't been down off the wall since we put it up there. But you guys asked me to bring things that were important to me, so I thought you should see that. The other thing I have and I brought for you is a poster that was done by a student working with the county. And this is a, a sort of a propaganda kind of poster. La Crosse County um, Circuit Courts, Exercising Justice with Honor. And then these, this was to give you an idea of who else we have. This is Judge Mulroy, Judge Bissell, that's the newest judge, uh, Judge Perlich, uh, Judge Monaban, who just retired, and myself. So I brought you that. Um, Part of what I like to do, as I told you before, is to be with kids, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so anytime anybody asks me to appear, uh, either at a diversity day or um, uh, to have them come to the courthouse and visit with me, I, I rarely say no unless I'm not going to be around, okay? So what I did is I brought you some stuff from that kind of stuff. So this is a t-shirt and um, a pin from La Crescent High School where I was their um, speaker for Diversity Day and their model was we must be the change we wish to see and that is a quote from um, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, And so they had a student design the t-shirt which is kind of cool I thought mm -hmm. and so um, this was 2002 so I brought that for you. That's a sort of a demonstration of some of the things I do because being a judge in La Crosse County and for me is not just sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get out to the community, meet with people, and have people understand that I serve them so that they gain respect and comfort with the people who sit in the in the courthouse making decisions. So that's why I do that. Okay, and I don't, and I go to La Crescent High School because it's right across. The Mississippi it's not like it's far far away mm -hmm. there are Minnesota neighbors and it's very important that we get along with them as well so I brought you that and I don't know how much of this you're gonna want to pull out but this is a sample a sample, a sample. Okay. A sample of well first of all there's all my newspaper articles but you've already seen all of those I think. no not all of them I've seen a couple okay and I also thought you might like to see a sample of the thank you notes I get from kids who have come to visit me. This is just a sample? Uh-huh, this is just a sample. <laughs> the sample is like 10%? The sample is a lot. The sample is a lot, yeah. So I thought maybe you might want to pull a couple and scan them or do whatever it is you want to do. But See, this is very important to me because this is the kinds of things I I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Having kids come to visit me and then they go back to their classrooms and then they send me little thank yous. And um, part of, and that's like a, set, a sample, mm -hmm. but the biggest, the most fun I ever had with that kind of stuff is something else I brought you. One day I was having lunch in Melrose. Have you ever been to Melrose? You know where Melrose is? Yeah, I've been by it. It's like going to Jackson County. Yeah. And I sat down in the in the little cafe in Melrose and the and the, the waitress put down a placemat. And I'm gonna show you the placemat. Then the placemat I had it I had it um, put on board. Mm -hmm. But the plate can you read what the placemat is all about? Teaching children to think and dream. Well, you. Yeah. <laughs> I sat down and here's a placemat about me. This is the Mel Melrose Mandora Area Education Association and what they did is they sponsored um, kids to make um, uh, they t art and out of their art they they put the, out these um, placemats and this one says is a uh, American Education Week November 16th through November 22nd 1997 and it has um, teaching children to think and dream and you have teaching <clears throat> I was I want to be like her and so she's the teacher saying to the teacher is in front of the classroom teaching and it says and Ramona Gonzalez was a famous lawyer and now she is a judge and then happy graduation because you see the same child graduating and then she was thinking about what she's gonna do and she's gonna go to where? Harvard. Harvard. She wants to go to Harvard. And then she's finally sitting there and she says, I finally made it. And what is she? A judge. She's a, she's a, she's a lawyer in 2007. So she starts her dream in um, 1995. She graduates in 1999. She goes to Harvard in 2000. And by 2007, She's living her dream, and she is. She is a lawyer. 
never a judge. So isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. So I thought that was so cool. I, I, I saved it because here's somebody who was thinking about me. <laughs> I also brought you um, this one you probably don't have because mm -hmm. this is a copy of the article that was in the Women in the Law, um, June 25th, 2003, about me. And I was selected as one of the recipients of Outstanding Women in the Law in Wisconsin. And it tells you a little bit about me and how I enjoy mm -hmm. reaching out to others. Okay. See what else I bring. Then I brought you two oh, things. Cool. I brought you two gavels. Okay. Um, when I was elected, my family gave me this what's called a ceremonial gavel. See, this is a ceremonial gavel because it has my name and a, and a plate on it. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is not really one you use. This is just, you can tell, because if, I, if yeah. I hit this one too often, this one's going to break, right? Mm -hmm. Also, I got this one. This one, you can see, has a chunk taken out of it. Uh -huh. And this, this one is the same gavel that Judge Pappas used mm -hmm. all those years. This one's lost for a long time. Well, it's made of oak. It's a big, it's a big hard one. So this is my gavel from that Judge Pappas had this gavel, and now I have this gavel. So, can you guess how long this gavel's been around? Thirty years. About thirty years. This gavel's been around. And during the time I was um, working for him and getting to know him, I also worked for another lawyer in town, and his name was John Bossard. B O S S H A R D. Mr. Bossard is no longer with us. He died. Okay. But here's Mr. Bossard's picture. And Mr. Bossard was, was the kind of guy that just said, there's no such word as can't. My dad says that all the time. There's no such word as can't because you can do it. What, no matter what it is, it can be done. And so that's Mr. Bossard. So I brought you him. Okay. Then I thought you might enjoy this um, photo album is a um, my program from when I was sworn in as judge, and then pictures of my swearing in. Cool. So I thought you might want to take a look at that. <laughs> okay. So that that's what else I brought. Um, I have a whole sorts of other things, but you have any other more questions while we're at it? Um. But did you go to Harvard? No, I didn't go to Harvard. I went to uh, Loyola University in Chicago, oh, yeah, and then I went to Marquette University Law School in Milwaukee. That's where my mom went. No, she didn't go to law school. She, was, she did live in Marquette, though. Well, Marquette University is an undergraduate and a, cal and a law school, so she doesn't have to go to law school to go to Marquette. No, I think well, she might have gone to that. I'm not sure. Or she might have came here. I got, I got a question. Okay. Um, how many years of college and schooling does it take to become a judge? Well, um, just like the placement says, it takes seven years. Because you have to go to college for four years and then law school for three years. And then you can become a lawyer. I would okay. be able to do that. No. Seven years. It's I not that bad. I don't know. It's like our whole school education right now. Okay. Oh, I got to make sure that all my stuff works. Okay, so what else did I bring? Anybody want to guess what this is? Isn't it um, Justice? Oh. That's right. This is Lady Justice. And if I can get her right. When I became um, a judge, this is one of the gifts I got from my family. Uh, and do you know why Lady Justice, why she looks the way she looks? She's got some over her eyes. Right, she's blindfolded. You know why she's blindfolded? Mm -mm. Because justice is supposed to be blind. You're not supposed to make rulings based upon how much money a person has, or what the color of their skin is, or whether they're male or female, or whether you like the way they smell or don't smell. You're supposed to, justice says that you look at everybody in the same way. And so justice has her blindfolds on. And the scales of justice are that justice weighs each side. Mm -hmm. And it's it 
each of the, of the scales contains evidence, and you weigh the evidence, and then you make your decision based upon the evidence and not your prejudices from your, from your eyes. Mm -hmm. And then justice also has a sword, because justice's orders must be about, uh, complied with, and so she has to enforce her orders. So that's Lady Justice. So I thought you guys might like to see her, and she sits on in my office all the time. She reminds me. Isn't, I, um, isn't she, um, there's like four of them, I think, in the capital? I think there are four of them in the capital. There's okay. um, Lady Justice, and then there's three other people. I can't remember who they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then I brought you several copies of the program from my um, swearing in. These are about 11 years old. You can each have one, and you can have those. So the main purpose of the statue is don't judge people by what they look, or don't, don't judge mm -hmm. a book by its cover. Right, don't judge a book by its cover. Very good. Very good. And then I thought I should bring it so that you don't think all I ever do is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd bring you this picture. Oh. <laughs> this, this is a picture of me and my husband. This is my husband, John. And we were the crew leaders for a Mardi Gras. Oh. So you know how the, Mardi, the, the Catholic Church has their Mardi Gras every year at the Cross Center? So that's me and all the crew leaders from all the different uh, parishes. And I thought you might see, I do some other stuff that's fun. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was, uh, um, they had a picture of your office in one of the articles oh, that I read. Yeah. And it said that you had like you know, a bunch of teddy bears and uh, a bunch of pictures and stuff in there. And, mm -hmm. so. I do, I bring all that, I, I have all that stuff in my office. And I have this. Do you have any idea what this is? It's one of those pieces that's That's a, um, a willow angel, yeah. and she's called Patience. And she sits on my, on my bench just like that on top of my nameplate because some of something the hardest things for judges to do is to have patience because you have to let everybody have their stay and have their day in court, mm -hmm. and, and that's very, very, very important. The other thing I brought you, oh, here's my little angel's place where she sits. And then I brought you my house. One of the things I do to make sure that I stay sane is I garden. So I brought you pictures of my house to show you my garden. My dad does a lot of that stuff. He's a landscaper. Oh, is so, he? Yeah. Oh, I could get to talk to him. <laughs> Yeah, so I just brought you pictures of my house, and I'll show you the most proud part of my house is my pond. If I can get there. You've got a pond. I have a pond, yes. And the pond, my husband built the pond, but I did the landscaping. So I enjoy my backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mostly my dad. Yeah, can you see my pond in the back there? Oh, sweet. There's my pond. That's an awesome yard. Thank you. That'd be cool. I have some, and I brought a picture of my mother. You look a lot like her. I thought you guys might. So I, I thought it might be important for you to see where I come from. This is my mother, and she was born in the Dominican Republic, and she passed away with cancer two years ago. But she's my other inspiration. So there the are two people that inspire me that are that are gone, or three people that are inspire me that are gone. And that's Mr. Bossard my mom and Mr. and Judge Pappas. And then the people that inspire me now while, while they're still alive is my father um, and my husband. And my father, I brought you a picture, my father was, in the, was a political activist in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. You read about him? Yep. So yeah. I brought you pictures of the, this, is, this book is in Spanish, but it's a history of the Dominican Republic, and there's my dad. Oh, cool. I read the, you guys, he had to um, flee the Dominican Republic. He had Republic. to flee the Dominican Republic, that's right. Because he, um, the dictator. Right, the dictator was a very bad dude. <laughs> and so I also brought you, in case you ever want to know a little bit about the bad dude that was a dictator in my country, um, there's a movie called In the Time of the Butterflies, which um, 
tells a little bit about what was going on in the Dominican Republic. So I brought you that too. And I brought you a collector item. Yeah, but this is the collector print. Those are my campaign pins. Yeah, it's on the, cup, on the front page. Mm -hmm. the there you go. I think that's the only one I have. Um, I have my pins, but... There's no one. Oh. There's there more back here? Yeah, there's one right there. Okay. Okay, there's... So, there. what does it mean by branches? Well, each... When you, when you um, have circuit court judges in a particular county, and you have more, you have enough population, so you have more than one judge. Then you, each time they have another judge, he's in a separate branch. So right now, La Crosse County has five branches, and I'm in branch one. But counties that are smaller, like Vernon County, they only have one judge, so they don't have any branches. Counties that are big, huge, like Milwaukee, have 40-some branches. But each branch means a separate courtroom. Okay. All right. So, what do you think? This is a lot of cool stuff. I, I think you're you brought the most stuff <laughs> for the entire day. It's all very Probably topped everybody's. <laughs> well, I didn't know what else to bring, but I thought I'd bring a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's a lot of thank you cards. I can't. I mean. That is a ton. It's a How many years old? Well, but I've been I've been doing this for eleven years though, Shane. So there's a lot of you know you can pull whatever couple of them that you think are mm -hmm. um, you want to use. Your mom inspired you to garden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My mother so, loved flowers, so yeah. So your um, your dad was a judge, right? No, or, my father's uh, a doctor. My father was a doctor who got himself involved in politics. And I read in there um, on one of the articles, she had to like flee by rooftop or something. To get yeah, out exactly. Place. She he had to run from rooftop to rooftop. Uh, that's the story that's in this book, um, in the in the history of the Dominican Republic. Everybody that voted for me had seen me, heard me, or shaken my hand. <laughs> well, um, one more question: Was there um, when you became the first woman judge? Was there any uh, criticism from people uh, when you became the judge? I don't think so. Um, I think that by the time I had one so so overwhelming that people really just were happy. Um, I'm sure there were some people that were disappointed yeah. because their candidate didn't win. But I, I've never felt as that as though the community had anything negative at all about me. I've been very blessed to have they have a lot of support from a lot of people that make me feel good about the job I do. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming. Well, yeah, you're thanks, welcome. Thanks, you're this welcome. was awesome. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.